and I'm Nathan from Arms and Armor. Uh, recently, we've gotten some questions about different kinds of medieval fighting axes, and in particular, what is a sparth axe? So S P A R T H. Um, a sparth is a, an English term for a fighting axe that derives from the Dane axes uh, of the Viking period. It's really up in the air whether this is actually a distinctive kind of axe or if it's just the essentially Anglo-Saxon English uh, name for a category of axe uh, that was used uh, in a wider context. So first of all here I want to show you some axes uh, that are related to sparths or that might be considered sparths in various contexts. Uh, the first one here, this is our Arms and Armor Type M Dane Axe. You can see that these are thin, uh, lightweight uh, weapons. Uh, this one's based on a historical original. Uh, you can see examples in these. Uh, for example, in the uh, Cultural Museum in Oslo, they have uh, several interesting ones of similar shapes to this. Uh, also in illustrations, for example, the bio tapestry, right, that depicts uh, 11th century battle, probably the Battle of Hastings, uh, shows axes like this. Now, this has uh, a haft uh, that's a little over four feet long. The whole thing is, I think, 57 inches from the point uh, to the butt. And it only weighs a couple of pounds. Right? It's a fast weapon, and it's really for fighting people who are minimally armored. This is for cutting. Right? It's not for just bashing. If someone had, you know, chainmail on that was popular at that time, of course you could bash them. Uh, the spike uh, would be pretty threatening uh, to mail. Actually, you could hit them with the back if you wanted to. But mostly, it's for cutting people. Right? It's like a sword. It's not for cutting down trees, it's for cutting meat. Uh, this Dane Axe is really the ancestor of essentially all later European cutting axes that were weapons. Right? So one we can look at is this particularly Irish version. Right? This is our Irish Axe. It's a, something that we've recently introduced. Uh, you can see that this has about a Oh, seven, eight inch cutting blade as opposed to the 10 or 11 inch blade on the Dane Axe. Uh, it's even lighter and the shaft is just a little bit shorter. It actually makes an excellent walking stick, which is essentially how uh, the Irish and the Galaglass uh, fighters uh, would carry them out in the open uh, constantly. This was occasionally referred to as a sparth, both in period and in descriptions, uh, like Victorian descriptions, of uh, these earlier uh, weapons. So the English word sparth was occasionally used to refer to these Irish fighting axes. Now, why is it this shape? Honestly, uh, it's kind of arbitrary. These are cultural aesthetics, and certain shapes have cultural meanings for certain cultures. Uh, it allows the point to be used Right, for a thrust, it can actually deliver a really severe cut, and the bottom end uh, is good as a hook. So you can hook and grab either a shield or someone's clothing, or if you want to pull them off a horse, it's good for all of those things. But this particular shape is just iconically Irish. Uh, the next one I want to look at quickly is, this is our Hungarian axe. Uh, this particular shape was common further in Eastern and Northern Europe. Uh, this guy is uh, really a 15th, 16th century, a uh, little bit later axe. And although it's a different shape from the Irish axe, it really performs the same kind of functions, right? It's got a point for thrusting. It's got a big cutting edge. It has a section here that can be used to pull, and it has a hammer on the back, right? It's also a little bit shorter uh, than the Irish axe, but it's actually a good length uh, for carrying and walking with. Uh, it's a little bit heavier uh, of a weapon. You can see the thickness of the blades here. 
Uh, but there's all kinds of variation among these things. So if you had an axe like this in England, instead of in Poland, you might have called it a sparth. Finally, I have here a bardiche, right? So a bardiche is another descendant of the Dane axe. It's also probably 15th century. Uh, these are a much longer pole arm, you can see. It's considerably taller than me. Uh, it's probably oh, about yeah, seven feet tall. Uh, it has this really long cutting edge. Uh, the blade is a little different shape than some contemporary axes. Often on these bardiches, the bottom edge would actually connect again to the haft. Not always though, this one's historically accurate. There are all kinds of examples where it doesn't, but sometimes it connected down here too. Bardiches were also sometimes called a sparth axe, uh, and they have similar qualities, right? It's a pole arm for fighting people who aren't wearing full armor, full harness. It's for, it's got that thrusting point and a cutting edge uh, that allows you as an infantryman, as someone on foot, to have really significant range and significant cutting power. Now, all of these are differentiated from the knightly pole axes that were made as essentially impact weapons for crushing armor, like our knightly pole axe or Burgundian pole axe, which you can look up on the links to this video. So what's a sparth? It's an axe in England and occasionally Ireland. Right. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care.